Hello, lads, lassies, and those of unspecified gender, it's the Irishman here, and today, we're going to be talking about what would have happened if Goku married Android 21. This is the sixth part to this what if, and if you have not already seen the other five videos on this topic, I would very much recommend you go check those out before coming back to this one if you enjoyed those other five. There will be a playlist linked down in the description, that way you're able to view all of them easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and with all that out of the way, let's get into the story of this what if. The Destroyer God Beerus the Destroyer has arrived on Earth in search of the Super Saiyan God. Although he doesn't plan to destroy him, rather he just wants to get the ultimate challenge from this being. Although he's easier to see than find, as Beerus has only ever seen him in a premonition he had while asleep, so he's not exactly sure where to look. But Earth does seem to be a pretty good place, since that's the only place in the universe that currently has Saiyans, except Vampa, but we'll get to that later, and probably not even in this video. Either way, Beerus has arrived on Earth, that way he can find his ultimate rival, who is most likely Goku, which Beerus can sense because, well, he's the strongest here, and immediately the kitty cat wants to see how strong Goku really is. He can sense it, but he wants to feel it. He wants their fists to clash. He wants their powers to surge against each other, and yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly go as Beerus intended, since Goku, although incredibly powerful in his own right, just can't compare to gods. Even when utilizing his Solar Saiyan transformation, Goku would still be beaten in just one punch! Android 21 would catch her husband at the last second, giving him a senzu bean, that way he wouldn't die. That's how strong this guy is. He was able to nearly kill Goku, the strongest of their fighters, in just one punch! Okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop that now, but I've been watching that lately. It's really good. I mean, like, I had read the manga, so I already knew it was good, but then, like, watching the anime, it was just an entirely different level of awesome. Either way, this is besides the point. The Z Fighters would be searching for some way to achieve the legend, to become a Super Saiyan God. However, they're having a bit of a hard time. Much like how Beerus wasn't sure how to find the Super Saiyan God, they're not sure how to become one, or if it is somebody out there that they can just bring to Earth somehow. Either way, they're having a really difficult time, but they begin to wonder if they even need to find or achieve Super Saiyan God since, well, Beerus is having a pretty good time. There might not be any sort of birthday party for Bulma going on, but it's entirely possible that they could just, you know, invite him to go get sushi or something. I'm sure Beerus would have a good time with any of Earth's customs, as long as it involves food and probably a bit of drinking. I don't know why, but I see Beerus as a bit of an alcoholic. And while the rest of the group is keeping Beerus entertained, Vegeta would be going off and gathering all of the Dragon Balls, to which it would take no time at all. He can teleport because he's basically the new Kami, and he also knows everything going on on Earth, such as where the Dragon Balls are, because he's basically the new Kami. Meaning it's almost instantaneous to get Shinron summoned, and when he is, he would tell the group that the Super Saiyan God is not a person, but rather a transformation, one that has never actually been achieved. Yes, Yamoshi was the first Super Saiyan, Goku was the first Super Saiyan God, and he is here too, since they actually have more than enough Saiyans to get the transformation started. Actually, scratch that last part I said. Not the part about there being enough Saiyans, but rather about Goku being the Super Saiyan God. Because, thinking about it, it would actually make a lot more sense for them to have Vegeta to be the one who has the ritual performed on him. Seeing as, not only is he purely good at this point, but at the same time, he is basically the new Kami. Meaning that he's able to access God Key a lot easier than everybody else, or at least he should be able to. Whether or not Kami actually had any sort of god key inside of him is debatable, now, but we know that Dende did. He was able to sense the god key inside of both Goku and Beerus, so it stands to reason Such that since Vegeta is Kami's replacement, just like Dende was, they should both be able to not only sense god key, but also utilize it. 
And this, since the Super Saiyan God ritual is just giving a Saiyan God key, it would make more sense for Vegeta to be the Super Saiyan God than anybody else, and I'll say that he is. So, Goku, Raditz, Nappa, Gohan, and Future Trunks all stand in a circle, surrounding Vegeta as they flow their power into him, leading to him achieving the Super Saiyan God form, and now finally being able to give Beerus the challenge he always wanted. Although he isn't necessarily as strong as the God of Destruction. As we all know, Beerus was holding back quite a bit, but Vegeta does still get to think he was able to challenge the god. And not only does this mean he's a bit more accepting of godly training, not that he wouldn't be beforehand, but now he's definitely pumped up for it, but it also means that Beerus, even though he was holding back, still got a hell of a fight out of it, which is all that really matters in his eyes. Now, during the one year time span between Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, Goku wouldn't actually be training on Beerus' planet, since he just doesn't want to. Yes, he would obviously want to get the training, but it's not as simple as that. He is a family man, he wants to spend time with the people he loves, and being away from them for a couple of weeks, or god forbid a couple of months, just isn't something he's too into. Maybe a couple of days, but it takes a couple of hours just to get to Beerus' planet in the first place, so he's not too interested. He would rather spend time training on Earth, although God Key is something he wants to obtain. So instead, he just has Vegeta give him a little bit of it, that way he can study it and maybe make some more of it artificially, or just grow with the little bit Vegeta gave him and adapt to it on his own. Either way, he'd prefer to train on Earth than actually go off to some far off planet just for a couple of days only to get a bit stronger. Not that Whis's training isn't efficient, it just he'd rather be on Earth. When Frieza actually does come back to life, trains for a couple of months, and then attacks the Earth yet again, everybody is a lot more prepared, since even though they didn't know beforehand, Goku would still be there when Frieza arrives, meaning that they're able to take him on right off the bat. And Frieza is a bit surprised that they're actually able to do this, since he trained for four months, he got literally millions of times stronger, it makes no sense that Goku is still able to keep up. Yes, he expected Goku to keep training, but not get this much stronger. That's just inhuman, or I guess insane. Yeah, I stole that joke from the bridge. Either way, Goku would get a hell of a lot stronger during that one year. And even though he probably wouldn't get to Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan God is definitely a possibility. And since he would also get a hell of a lot stronger base to base, even without God Key, I feel like he'd be able to give Golden Freeze a run for his money. He definitely wouldn't be beating him outright, but since the stamina issue is still there, eventually Frieza would get so weak that even just regular Super Saiyan Ga Goku here would be enough to take him on and take him down, meaning that the Earth is safe even without Vegeta coming back, which he probably would anyway. Now, it might seem a bit strange that Vegeta isn't actually on Earth 24-7 like Goku seems to be, since more so than Goku, he has more of an obligation to be. He is the guardian of Earth after all, but really I don't see this being that much of a problem for him. He is the guardian, meaning he makes the rules and can decide whether or not he needs to be on Earth. Now we don't know the significance of the whole guardianship, but honestly I can see it just being something he writes off as a title he holds, but doesn't need to uphold if that makes any sense. He might just be able to tell Popo to handle all of his responsibilities and just leave. Which isn't exactly what he's doing, he does still go to Earth from time to time, especially with his teleportation, he can be there in an instance, but either way, he can spend as much time off planet as he wants. He is the boss. Although, we're not stopping there, seeing as Vegeta doesn't just want to be the guardian of Earth, he wants to go beyond that. He wants to rise up the godly totem pole. And since Vegeta is currently the only person training on Beerus' planet, he can get some special training from Beerus himself, meaning that he would eventually be a candidate for God of Destruction, probably around the time the Universe 6 tournament would begin. Vegeta would go to Earth a couple months after the Frieza debacle and tell them all about a tournament that's coming up, one that decides the fate of Earth. Now, it might seem a bit odd that Vegeta would be the person giving this message, since Vegeta would arrive on Earth a few months after the whole Frieza stuff and tell everyone that there's a tournament going on, one that decides the fate of the Earth. 
Well, kind of. It really just decides where the Earth is going to be, whether it's Universe 6 or 7. But this is kind of a big deal, so everyone is in and the strongest members will be decided. Vegeta and Goku are obvious picks. Even if Goku hasn't been training with Beerus, he is still a Super Saiyan God. Android 21 would be next up since she's been keeping up with her husband. If Gamma 1 and 2 can be as strong as the likes of Super Saiyan Blue, Tournament of Power, Goku and Vegeta, then I see no reason Android 21 couldn't keep up with her husband at this very moment. Meaning that she's also an obvious pick. The fourth entry would be Gohan. Since even though he hasn't been keeping up with his training necessarily, he would still at times keep training with the likes of his father and mother who are already on the team and would want him to be there. And he's probably a bit stronger than his main series counterpart at this time anyway. And since he also is married to Bulma, she has probably cracked up a few different gravity chambers for him to train in anyway. So he would be pretty powerful and the fourth member of the team. Now, this is a bit vague. We don't really know who exactly would be chosen here since it's not as clear cut as the others, but I think it'd be Piccolo. He hasn't been a key player in the story or anything, but I do feel like he would definitely be someone that they would want to keep in mind. Not just because he was a member of the Z Fighters or a former villain, but rather because, well, he's pretty powerful in his own right. He might not be a god tier level fighter, but he is pretty close, and at least as strong as his main series counterparts, if not a little stronger, since everybody else is obviously a bit stronger than they were, this would rub off on Piccolo too who's always just kind of training in the background. With the fighters picked, they would arrive at the tournament arena a couple days later, where they would be met with the Universe 6 fighters, who have not changed in any way, because why would they? Entering the fight, well, it's basically the same as the original tournament, with the exception of Hit for obvious reasons. He's the strongest, and his fight is the only one that really matters in this arc. Goku would be the first up to fight against the time-skipping assassin. He would enter the fight in Super Saiyan God, which is impressive since he hasn't gotten any godly training and still mastered the form, but it doesn't appear to be enough. Seeing as, Hade would strike him down to the ground with just one attack. Goku would stand back up, having his hair turn black, as everyone is shocked. Goku lets off a snarky remark that Hit's already lost, if that was his maximum power. Which, again, surprises people because this is too much bravado for such a seemingly weak person. Goku would then suddenly have his hair stand up yellow, but this isn't enough, it's just regular Super Saiyan. Or I guess Solar Super Saiyan for him, but the point still stands. But then his yellow hair begins to shatter into a brilliant white, and everybody is slack-jawed. They are surprised, stunned even, that Goku has this much power, as it displays even more than Vegeta while in Super Saiyan Blue, something that Whis would remark. Hit would ask in the typical anime fashion, What is this power? To which Goku would explain, He was gifted the power of a star, the strength of the thing that created the very planets they walk on. However, he also had the power of a god, something he was able to obtain because of his friends and the relationships that he had developed. This is the entire climax of those two systems, now working together flawlessly. The most powerful thing that the gods created, and the power of those very beings themselves, to which he calls this form Primary Evolution. Champa would snicker. <laughs> he said climax. Champa would scream out, Im impossible, as he already knows he's lost. Goku would rush over to hit faster than the eye can perceive, knocking him down to the ground and throwing him out of the arena. He didn't even have time to activate his time skip as Goku was just that fast. The entire Universe 6 team is terrified because Champa is pissed, but they don't have much time to be scared as soon Champa is. Zeno would arrive in the arena, and even Beerus, who was only a moment ago chuckling and cheering because of his victory, would be down at his knees, praying to Zeno not to kill them all. Well, he doesn't outright say that, he's mostly just singing Zeno's praises, but, well, the message is still sent across. Although Zeno isn't there to kill them, 
Rather, he just says that he liked the fights, thought they were cool, and wanted to see some more if they ever have the chance. He permits them to do any more tournaments, no matter how dangerous, because, well, Zeno just doesn't care. Then he leaves just as fast as he arrived, and everybody feels a weight be lifted off their shoulders, especially Beerus and Champa. And that, my dear viewers, is where we're going to be ending things for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this, as I certainly enjoyed making it, and if you could, please like the video, subscribe to the page, and hit the notification bell, that way you're notified whenever I release any new videos, that would be very much appreciated. And with all of that out of the way, this is, always has been, and always will be the Irishman. Talk to you later. Bye.